In 2013, the horns of war once more trumpeted across the globe. Great and terrible weapons were loosed with reckless abandon. Cities and nations were burned away. Yet, this was not the end many had predicted. This was but the beginning of yet another bloody chapter of human history. Deep within Burra Bay National Park, the children of Solnechny summer camp were spared the immediate horrors of the war. Saved by their isolation and a great pre-war dam that held back millions of tons of radioactive sediment. To the survivors, over the coming days it became clear that they were on their own. Fear, anxiety, and depression grew. Their supplies limited to the camp's remaining stores and their own meager possessions. Their only consolation a wise and experienced campmaster, a man whom history would know as the teacher. This teacher imparted to them the skills needed to survive teaching them to hunt the beast of the forest, to build shelter, to forage for food and supplies, to treat injuries, and to make the most of their resources. In the face of the apocalypse, they thrived, spreading into the surrounding forests, and for a time they lived in relative peace and contentment, their success leading some children to view the teacher as a prophet and his teachings as a sort of gospel something that the teacher actively sought to discourage. As the years wore on, changes came to the valley. An increasing number of mutated beasts chose to make their home in the forest. Numerous outsiders passed through their lands. The children were forced once more to adapt. Under the teacher's guidance, they developed a system of justice, a relatively simple system of reciprocity. Those that acted in peace would be met with peace. And despite the objections of the teacher, those that brought violence would in turn face violence. The children took to masking themselves with the skulls of man and beast, their clothing growing ragged, and displaying the bodies of bandits at the edge of their territory, all in the hopes of scaring away potential threats. Such efforts proved in vain, Year after year, the bandit attacks increased. More and more of their comrades fell. In the face of calls for retribution and vengeance, the teacher advocated pacifism, calling upon the children to flee from threats, to only engage in violence as a last resort. His message was lost in the fires of a particularly violent assault that left several of the children dead. A popular and influential boy named Roman rallied those that sought vengeance, leading them to slaughter their foe. Later they returned to the camp, drenched in the blood of their enemies and cheered on by their peers. The teacher grew disillusioned, eventually retreating from the community and settling into an abandoned church to contemplate where it all had gone wrong. His contemplations only periodically broken by the visit of some of his former students. Their visits became rare in time, and isolated and alone his thoughts grew dark. Filled with sadness and anger, he took his own life. In his absence, the children were left to interpret his teachings. In their efforts, factionalism grew. The battle-hardened among them adopted the moniker of pirates, attacking any and all outsiders looting from their fallen enemy and increasingly ignoring their old system of justice. Many of the others eventually took the name of the pioneers. Their interpretation was much more orthodox, seeking to live a peaceful if isolated life. Roman partially filled the vacuum left by the teacher, becoming the nominal leader of the tribe, and a council was created to make broad decisions but both lacked the authority of the teacher, and were often questioned, and in some cases openly ignored. Despite disagreements and dissension, things continued as they always had, with tribe members working together for their common survival. By 2036, the dam that had shielded their valley from radiation for so many years began to give way. Some say that in their hostility, the pirates killed or scared away those that sought to warn them of this impending danger. 
Others, that in the face of this new threat, the children of the forest fell back to what they had been taught, and sought out cleaner pastures, carrying the teacher's lessons to a new land.